EV Stealth Solutions is the leading electronic vehicle towing solution. The reality is the electric vehicles can actually do exactly the same things that a petrol car can do. So hang, on, hang on, hang on. You can't tow a caravan with an EV. Scott Morrison told me so. It's not going to tow your trailer. It's not going to tow your boat. It's not going to get you out to your fa favourite camping spot with your family. So I'm here with Michael from EV Stealth Solutions. What does that mean? What do you do? EV Stealth Solutions is a leading electronic vehicle towing solution. We bought a Model 3 back in 2019. We wanted to get the kids' bikes on and tow a little trailer. So Tesla will never tell you that you know the car can't actually tow, but they're actually certified that for towing. But the irony is that never brought out a tow bar with it. A big part of my journey is really trying to dispel a lot of those rumors that EVs can't tow. The reality is the electric vehicles can actually do exactly the same things that a petrol car can do. It's just that there's not much information about it. So let's have a look at the product itself. Sure, please. This is called a stealth system. So this is a tow bar for the Model 3. This is the first Model 3 tow bar to be ever compliant in Australia. What you don't see behind the car is this system here. So this is basically the tow bar that mounts onto the car. Yeah. So the beauty behind the Stealth is that, look, let's face it, a lot of electric vehicle owners are a bit precious about the aesthetics of the car and the look of the car. Most factory made tow bars will punch a big hole in the bumper. Our one doesn't. Our one comes, it's a vertical hitch system. So basically what happens you is- You come around, eh? I come around and then when I'm not using my tow bar, oh. this pretty much comes off. Oh. Right? And so no one will even know I've got a tow bar actually installed on it. Uh, I'll just show you how this clicks yeah, back Yeah, click on. it back on, yeah. That's so that's interchangeable between that, that square receiver. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've got your bike racks on or accessory, luggage carrier, you put that on. If you're towing, you put that on. Um, Did you design that? No, this is a US manufactured system. At US is probably two, three years ahead of us from the Tesla branding point of view. And so there's a lot of aftermarket products over there. This is the best selling aftermarket tow bar in the US. We're the exclusive distributors for stealth hitches in Australia. We were the first partner for them outside of Australia. But what we're looking to do now is think about manufacturing them locally. Not only is we thinking about our cost, but we're thinking about our footprint. Right now we're flying these in, shipping them in. We're thinking about our carbon footprint also. I mean, if we can't build this in Australia, bloody God help us. And we certainly can. But realistically, we want to promote how it's manufactured. So not only is it locally made here in Australia, but also it's actually using recycled steel. So that's from a carbon footprint point of view and from what the EV community represents. I think that's really important, and for, especially for the community to understand, particularly as we move towards an ESG environment where people start to think about more than just you know, the cars themselves and the footprint, but sustainability from the bottom up. And that's a big part of Do what- Do you think I'm, Australians will ever get there? Look, I hope so. I hope so. It's been a slow burn to date. And, and speaking of slow burn, look, to be fair, we're a net exporter of fossil fuels, right? And that's what's given Australia its sovereignty to date. So I get that. I think there's a fine balance, and this is why I leave it to the politicians. I, I, I never intend to go into politics. I look at your hair, and you don't have too many grey ones yet. There must have something happened that maybe caused you to wonder if you will get grey hair. So Australia's probably got some of the most strictest laws globally. And that's not only in sort of electric vehicles and clients, you know, property development, which you know, sort of my background in, that's there's a lot of red tape in that. For example, this particular tow bar, this is internationally rated, right? There's an international standard of engineering. Well, but yes. then when you come to Australia, Correct. you start from square one, is I it? I had to start from square one and I had to actually go and retest it with oh, another Oh, the Australian engineer knows much more than everybody oh, else. Gosh. But I think, look, to Australia's credit in that, I think therefore you know you've got some of the safest products if they are allowed to be released and sold to, to the general public. I have one last question, sure. which was about the range envy. So let's say if I got my little Millard 1962 caravan yep. mm. and my Tesla normally does I don't I assume 460 something yep. like that mm. am I down to 200 K or yeah, you can so if you've got a 1960s caravan it's probably not firstly it's probably not aerodynamic so that's gonna impact range a lot more than for example some of the more modern designed caravans right. at the moment would I lose with most decent sized trailer, maybe about a third. Is that about yeah. a right calculation? Look, no, to be honest with you, look, if it's a real big box trailer, for example, that sits above your car and the wind resistance, you might even lose more, right? You know, we've had a customer, for example, in Canberra tow a 1,000 kilogram caravan, but it was beautifully aerodynamically designed, and he got about 300 k's from that, of his 500 kilometer range. It's not a perfect calculation. There are multiple influences uh, and impacts to range, and this is the whole point about our business, that we want to share as much of that information as possible to the wider community, work with the governing bodies, work with the associations to really you know, spread that information to make people, as they're thinking about making that transition, a bit more comfortable with range. My gut feeling is that we've seen such an evolution in batteries even just in the last decade. Mm. 
that 1,000k range, mm. I think down the track will actually be part of a car and at that point in time we're really discussing something that's not relevant. Exactly, I certainly hope so. To be honest, there, you know, and, and, and that's something that's definitely changing. Technology's improving, design's improving and that's inevitable. And ultimately as we get more investment into the sector, that's something that we will come to. Thanks Michael. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.